So do you like my pair of Yum brand bifocal polarized fishing glasses? What? You say that Yum doesn't make bifocal fishing glasses? Well, let me show you how you can get a pair of these. If you're any fan of the channel, you've seen me do multiple reviews. Uh, for instance, there was a Japanese pair of sunglasses that I did, and I was pretty critical about them because they were supposed to be olive green, and they were not. And their design, they are supposed to be sports fishing glasses, but they weren't. And so I, I was very critical of them. Another one that I've been very critical of is Optical Factor, and I've been dealing with them now for far too long uh, with their piece of crap, uh, polarized prescription lenses. Now, as I've said numerous times on my channel, uh, back in 2019, I got in a wreck and it messed up my eyes, among other things. And... So even though the case has been settled for a while now, I'm still dealing with eye issues. And I I just don't want to pay $300 for a pair of prescription sunglasses just so I can go fishing and tie some knots and stuff. That's the reason why I tried Optical Factor. That was a mess up. Now, Yum! Brand, they're not, they're not sponsoring today's video. But I will say, as critical as I am with my reviews, and I'm pretty critical, I admit it, I, I, I will dog a product very easily in a review. But Yum, for less than $4, it was $5.07 with tax today. This is a pretty good pair of sunglasses. As far as polarization goes... The polarization that they have is by far the best polarization I have seen commercially available to the average consumer. Um, and I, I've worn Oakley's, I've worn some bigger name brands, and they did not have the polarization that Yum does. They're also in amber, which since nobody hardly makes olive green anymore, uh, amber is really the ideal color for inshore fishing, especially in northwest Florida. The problem I have with Yum Brand is, well, their frames poorly fit. Uh, if you get the kind that have the really wide sides so that they do not let in the sunlight and so you can see better with them, well, then they fit too tight. If you get the bigger ones that are, are don't have a frame at the bottom, you know, more contemporary style, real thin sides, not only do they let in a lot of light, but they're too loose on the head. But I got a little hack that will fix this and make me a pair of polarized bifocal glasses for less than $20 that fits. Stay tuned. The first step in this process is we're going to boil the glasses. And I know that sounds really weird, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute, but I have laid down a little protective layer for the hot uh, liquid that we're going to be dealing with. All right, so these are two very tall coffee mugs that I have brought to a boil in the microwave, uh, and now we're going to set our glasses in them. And as you can see... The, the side arms of the glasses are fitting quite nicely in there. We're going to let them sit in there for approximately a minute. We just want to be nice and limber. Not melted, but limber. Okay? All right, a minute has passed. Our glasses are being nice and boiled. Let's see how limber they are. Well, different companies use different plastics, and obviously Yum is using a more durable plastic than some of the competition. Uh, for that purpose, I'm having to go a little bit longer than I normally would, so I'm going to try for about two minutes and see if that does anything. If not, we'll keep going up. It may be as long as five minutes. That's where you're going to have to play around with it. All right, two minutes have expired. Let's give this a go, see if maybe that's made a difference. 
All right, so I did notice these got a little bit bendy, but weren't that bendy. I'm going to go for a full five minutes. I'm tired of playing around. We're going to set these for five minutes and go for All right, we got them in for five minutes. Let's see how this goes. All righty. So let's see if these are ready. Still not ready. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and do these for a good 10 minutes. What I'm noticing, and here's the thing with yum. They're... They're designed way better than people give them credit for. So there is a thick section. You can see the thickness. So in here is super thick. And then you got a thin ridge. And then you got a thick ridge. And so this right here that's real thin is what's getting melted down. I'm going to try to focus a little bit better. But this other part right here. You can see that right there along the top. That's thick. And then you got this real thick area here. So you got different thicknesses of plastic. And so some are melting or getting soft, not melting, but soft. And other parts are not. And so I've got to get them to where they're good and soft throughout. And so that's going to take a little bit longer time than some brands of cheaper glasses you deal with. All right, timer's gone off. Um, water has cooled a little bit, added some more boiling water to it, but right now it's sitting at about 174 degrees, 173.8 really. So it's still just a little bit below boiling, but not that much more. Okay, so next step is you just put them on, which I know this looks ridiculous, but you just put them on and wait for the... Uh, the plastic to cool, which doesn't take that long. Uh, it just needs to fit to your head. You're not wanting to make a big difference. You just want to make a small enough difference for it to work. For the next step of the project, you're going to have to mark your glasses where your eyeball normally sees things so that you're not putting uh, any type of refracting lenses in the way of your normal vision. You can mark it a number of ways. I highly recommend using some thin painter's tape. It's cheap. It doesn't leave behind a sticky residue and it's very easy to work with. So I'm going to go into the bathroom, put on my glasses, and put some tape on my glasses. And you'll see how it looks when I'm done. This right here is why frame designs can be so deceptive. If you went straight, you'd actually be impeding the line of sight. As you see here, the way they fit my face, they're off at an angle. And so that right there gives me a line that I can now follow. I'll put that right there. That I can now follow that line. And anything below that line is where I can put the uh, bifocal lenses, but what bifocal lenses are, are am, I, am I talking about? These right here, they cost $4 if you order them off of Amazon. If you try to order them anyplace else, they'll run anywhere from $20 to $50. All they are is stick-on lenses that you stick on to your glasses. And some have glue, some don't. These right here just feel like they're the sticky kind that just stick on, which is kind of neat. You can cut them to shape, but I like this right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of figure out where they um, need to go with my eyes because I need to actually make another marking. I'm, I just realized that. I'll show you that in a minute. So I forgot to make two critical adjustments. So this is where... My iris starts roughly on each side, so I put two pieces of tape there, two pieces of tape there. So basically in this frame that you're looking at, this is where my iris or my pupils are looking at. So that little slit is all that's needed. rest of this is just if I'm looking to the sides or whatever. So what I'm doing is I'm going to place that little that little lens thing right there under this so that I've got a guide to go from. 
All right, now I need to get me some lens cleaners and clean both this set of lenses and also this set of lenses so that I've got something nice and clean and everything, no holes or nothing to give me impacted vision. The next step in all this is uh, just a final touch to get rid of some of the air pockets and things of that nature is to just hit it a little bit with a air a hair dryer just go on a um, warm setting very low gentle warming press out any air bubbles and it'll be fine this is the self clean uh, type of plastic that they do for decals and stuff you're going to get some air bubbles uh, you eventually work them out with a little bit of skill and time and patience but uh, it and you don't even have to do this it's just something that I like to do now, something I will say about these things, do wear them. Uh, the good thing about it is these little bifocal things on the inside of them, you can always take them off and you can trim them as you need to. Right now, I'm getting used to them. And so I've got these little floater things, so if they fall, I don't lose a pair of my, my polarized glasses that have the bifocals. Uh, you can get cheaper pairs of these little floaty things at Walmart for like three bucks. I think I paid 12 bucks for this one and it has more foam in it, so I trust it a little bit more. So just a small upgrade uh, to the overall cost of everything. Not much. I mean, you know, still under 50 bucks for something that I was having to pay, going to have to shell out $300 for. But like I said, you can always trim these little lenses, so uh, I may end up doing that. Wear it a little bit. Get used to it. That's the beauty of this project. You can make it your own. And if you want to go with a more pole or more um, stronger lens, you can do that. If you want to go with a less strong lens, you can do that. It's really up to you. Now, this is just a little bit stronger than what my doctor recommended, but I needed it for really close-up stuff, even with my glasses, my real glasses. I was having a problem kind of seeing the the um, hooks and stuff at a certain distance, so this allows me. Um, I'm going to play around with it, modify as I want to, but I think if you'll do this, you'll be really satisfied with the results. So, tell me what you think. Pretty neat idea. Low cost solution, very affordable, very easy. Just gotta quit overthinking things sometimes. If you like this video, please give it a like. Share it with your friends that may need this and need to know how to do it. It's very simple to do. Subscribe if you hadn't already thought about doing it uh, because I'm all the time doing crazy things. This is a life channel, not a niche channel. So I do a lot of crazy stuff and stuff like this, and you never know when I might have a solution to a problem that you've been dealing with. Plus, I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I know it's going to be difficult, but uh, with your help, we can get there. So um, thank you for all your support, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.